Well, this is lesson number 51. My name is Jim Caseman, and uh, thank you for joining uh, with me this morning or this afternoon, whatever your time is. And we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And so we have in the last few sessions, we've talked about the three baptisms uh, that are part and should be and are required, really, to be part of the Christian life. And all three baptisms are, are important. We talked about the baptism of regeneration, how to be born again, how to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We talked about the water baptism, which is a public declaration of our commitment and dedication to the Lord that we are declaring we're turning our back on the world, we're turning our back on sin, and we're going to begin living with uh, with our whole life dedicated to Jesus Christ with our purpose in our heart to be obedient to him as our Lord and Master and we're letting the whole world know so to speak as we do this before our congregation or witnesses and then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit which we talked in quite some length about and how the disciples were born again but then John 20 and, and 22 but then they were told not to go anywhere until they received the Yes, the promise of the Father, Acts 1, 4, 5, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, in verse 8, they would receive power to become Christians, to be able to take the gospel to the world, to be able to stand against darkness. And so it is absolutely a requirement. Now, I thought that I would, uh, what we should do right now, I don't, <clears throat> you know, we've got all kinds of people that are, are listening to this. Some have, you know, been around for many years and uh, know them probably more than I do. <laughs> And then, of course, we have new Christians who a lot of these things are new. So I don't like to take anything for granted. I shared how we were invited to the neighborhood Bible study and um, how they had obeyed their pastor, had the Bible study. Fourteen of our neighbors showed up. And, of course, all 14 of us were born again because of their obedience. And so from that point on, if I had not been born again, uh, um, sometime I'll probably go into my testimony, but... I was born again on that Tuesday night, and I would have been dead Thursday morning if it hadn't been for that Bible study. But <clears throat> I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior on that Tuesday night, and come Thursday morning, of course, when my I came out for breakfast, my wife greeted me by saying, Jim, you're not cussing anymore. And then I, I realized that Jesus, how he got into my heart, I don't know. You know, I was an adult, not a child, 29 years old. But I could sense something moving inside of me. And I knew it was Jesus had come into my heart when I asked him to do. And that I'd never take his name in vain ever again. And I haven't. It changed. My nature changed. So there may be some out there who have never asked Jesus to come into their heart. And of course, it's not difficult. <clears throat> God, does, God doesn't make anything hard. We, we, we make salvation available to all of us. Jesus paid the death penalty for our sins, and he suffered the wrath and judgment of God for us in hell, so we wouldn't have to go there. And, and, and so <clears throat> now that, that uh, gift of salvation is being made available to all of mankind. Technically, he for, well, he did. He forgave the sins of all of mankind, even Hitler, people like that. All their sins are forgiven. The debt to guilt is paid. <clears throat> However, now we have to receive that gift of salvation. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, and it is uh, just, well, if Jesus hadn't said it, I wouldn't, you know, it would be difficult for me to believe it. But I'll just read it so that you know I'm not making this up. And chapter 7 and verse 13. Jesus is speaking and says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And when they say destruction, that's talking about hell. And there are many who go in by it. Many are going to hell. Because, verse 14, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So even though he forgave the sins of all of mankind, and all of mankind could receive this gift of salvation through Jesus. And every human being on this planet could go to heaven. But Jesus tells us that the majority of the people on this planet will miss heaven. They'll be going to hell because they didn't receive Jesus Christ into their lives. And the, and, and the redemption that went with that, with his shed blood and his death, burial, and resurrection. 
And that's sad. I mean, uh, to think about it, the majority of people want nothing to do with Jesus. They don't they want nothing to do with his plan of redemption. They want to satisfy their own selfishness, their flesh, and live in sin uh, with the world. And they don't, they're not even thinking about going to heaven. Matter of fact, a lot of people think because, oh, you know, I'm a good person, I give and I help people and give to the poor, I'm going to heaven. No, there's only one way to go to heaven, and that's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way. God only works through blood, as we already talked about in some of our previous sessions. So then, we had then gone to here. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, I'll come back here to Romans chapter 10, where we were working out of that portion of Scripture in earlier sessions. But here, here's how you receive Jesus. It said in verse 8, but what does it say? Romans 10, 8. The word is near you and in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, grandma can't do it for you, parents can't do it for you, it's got to be your mouth. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that's your innermost being, not your head, that, that, that Christ, that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now what's significant about that? He died. Now if he had not been raised from the dead, that means then that sin, death, and Satan still have power in, and, and, and we are captive. But Jesus, upon his resurrection, he broke the power of death and Satan upon his resurrection. The power of sin, the power of death, the power of Satan was broken. And now we can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior because the penalty for the sin was paid for. The penalty was death. And Jesus died and he went to hell and suffered the penalty for us so we wouldn't have to go. And the power of Satan's broken. So now every human being is free. The power of Satan and sin and death is broken. Every human being on this earth can ask Jesus to come into their heart. And then when they ask Jesus to come into their heart, their nature is changed. According to Colossians 1.13, they're taken from the power of darkness, transferred into the kingdom of the Son of His love. They switch families, no longer part of Satan's family, but part of God's family. So if you're listening right now and watching, simply, just simply, just ask Jesus to come into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you suffered the death penalty for me so that I could skip hell and go to heaven. I believe that you've been raised from the dead to, and, and that sin, the power of death and sin and Satan is broken and your precious blood has, has remitted my sins, paid the debt of guilt for my sins and enabled me to ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior and I ask you to come into my heart right now. Be my Lord, be my Savior. And I believe that you, by faith you've come into my heart and now I can walk in your presence with no sense of guilt, condemnation, or inferiority. You know, just simply ask him to come in your heart. It's not hard. But you have to believe that he suffered the death penalty for you. And then, of course, the next thing he told his disciples not to go anywhere and that he'll receive the, the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is what it tells us here in Acts chapter 4 and 5. He says, he says, wait for the promise of the Father, verse 4. And then verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then because you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You'll receive power to live the Christian life. Absolute power over sin, death, and Satan. And you know what? We should just do it God's way. He says, be born again, be water baptized, and receive the gift of uh, this, the, the, the promise of the Father, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a gift from God. His power, unlimited power, unlimited ability, so that we can be successful in our walk with God and make it to heaven. So that's real simple. You say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I receive by faith, I believe that I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and I have that unlimited power and unlimited ability now. Your power, Holy Spirit, your power, God, by your Spirit, living in me. Unlimited power, unlimited ability to fulfill in its fullness what you've called me to do. It's that easy. Don't make it hard. Father, I thank you for all those who are listening to me. I thank you, Lord, that those who are not saved ask Jesus to come into your heart. Those who have been saved, I thank you, Lord, that they now ask 
to be baptized with your spirit, to have the power to live this successful Christian life. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.